Well, maybe you did better than you think. Um, um, we are at AP Lit, and we are uh, talking about chapter three of the book. Um, all right, do you have, um, do you have uh, uh, we want everybody to say something, and you can still ask questions, but uh, there are things about the story, that's why we're talking about it also. Um, but anybody want to, uh, want to start uh, just comments about it? Uh, yes. Yeah, please I'll start. Um, I thought, especially the ending part, uh, demonstrate how powerful, like, obviously corrupt, but how powerful now Willie and Jack have become, being able to uh, put down two impeachments, one of White and one of Willie himself. They just have to say a couple words, and, you know, they get whoever they're looking for to come out, like, I think it's like, White is a sheep. So it kind of shows that they have some real And power. you learn about what that power looks like. So how, describe how they do it. How do they yeah, accomplish so it? usually they'll, like, uh, I'll take like the books and like they pull up someone they say like they tell the guy to say like have you ever heard of like loot, uh, like slick someone or like they'll say a name yeah. and the person will come out and they'll look just scared to death because they know like it'll seem like they know something even if they don't you know it's almost like you know we have dirt on you so if you don't uh, do what we say we're going to spill spill it to everyone everyone will know it's, it's blackmail, but you, you suggested that they may not have any dirt on it. Yeah, sometimes they might just even um, love it. But, but I, I don't know that they make stuff up. No, but you know, that Which is where we are now. We, we do see things where people just come right out and say something, and uh, you know, it didn't have to be at all true, but at least he uses real or he, he bluffs. Um, thank you. Yeah. up here, and my page numbers are going to be different when, when we'll come back to this, but uh, I, I still feel there's something in Willie, even though he uses, he's corrupt in that he robs and uses these things, and of course he has a personal life that's corrupt, but he, he seems to have this idealistic view of his role as governor, uh, and there are a couple places where, in other words, his, in his case, the end truly justifies whatever means he even explains that about laws. He's talking about, uh, what was the name? Um, not, not Brian White, but um, Hugh Miller. And he was explaining to him, you know, that everything is malleable. Everything is is changeable. You know, you can you can change things. And it seems because we have this end, which is good. Root out the bad guy. Um, and it doesn't matter how you do it. Uh, yes? Um, well, yeah, I was just going to kind of, saying of like how powerful blackmail is and like how effective it is because you know something like as big as impeachment um you know that's like a big deal no matter what i guess and why does it work because people don't want to be exposed like they they want to keep their reputation yeah so and it just it just shows how one well, also the fact that he did like have some blackmail on them it shows been paying attention to the state politics, you know, uh, I think one of the, the, the Democratic uh, challenger to the Republican, um, apparently, you know, got caught in a cheating, texting, and even, you know, adultery scandal. Um, but he's using tax things, not tax things, but um, what, what would you call them? Uh, you know, getting slush fund payment from insurance companies against Republican, so they're both calling each other. Um, so, yeah, you know, who's going to? And it's what, five days, four days before the election. Nothing. Any. Neither of those things are going to be determined whether they're right or wrong. But 
you got to go in the voting booth. It's got, it sounds like there's stuff against him being an adulterer. It sounds like there's stuff against him being a, you know, maybe taking money on, on the side. Um, you know, that's, that's, we live in this same kind of culture. Rollins, and we'll go to. Um, I just thought it was interesting how successful Billy is just on his own and with Jack, because, like, even though he didn't have, like, the big group of legislators or, like, McCaffrey's whole, like, I feel like from the story, he'll just continually get more powerful on his own and like use less and less people, which, I mean, it doesn't seem like, I mean, he's not failing at it. I mean, it's corrupt, but. Why is he, why, um, the other guys would use the same tactics. You're right, it doesn't seem to be, he doesn't have high, have friends in high places. Yeah. He's doing it himself with yeah. Sadie and yeah. Jack and some others. It just shows a lot about his character that he's like trying to remain like as, I don't know, he's trying to come across to the public as he's like not as political as the rest of them. Yeah, the, out, and the outside. Yeah, he he's like he's kind of showing that he's like the rest of them. Yes. But in reality popular. the way he uses his power shows that he is just like the rest of them. Yeah, very good. That that's that's really that's his thing, that's his tactic, that's his um, persona. You know, I'm the outsider and really is. He doesn't have friends in those places. Uh, yes. Um, I was confused by Jack's mother and Jack's relationship together. Uh, they would always fight and then he'd always end up coming back. And he kind of had a strange childhood too. I was just surprised that he kept coming back to the house. Can you describe some of the relationship or the childhood, uh, some of the details there, anything you can remember? Yeah. Nice yeah. <laughs> so, I thought, I don't know, it was a strange part of it. She was married about four times. Yeah. Uh, some of them died, some of them left. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, Ellen, I'll, we'll come back to you. Sure. Um, yes. I thought it was interesting how much of a father figure that Judge Irwin was to Jack. Mm -hmm. And that was just kind of Everybody understand the, what what the story of his father's is. I mean, um, um, his father. What's his first father? Uh, where did he go? Where, where is he? He's hanging out with his sister. All right. So he leaves for some reason. He's married to the young executive right now. They mentioned. You remember the two others that I recall? And the count was the one who abused her. Um, Tycoon died. He was older. Um, and so the young executive who, he's mar who she's married to now, and we don't know m much about how the other relationship ended. Uh, yes? Well, I kind of also was confused on the shade. The part with the mother was the part that I liked reading about the most. Because personally, like the first time in the book, pretty much the first part where I got to like, kind of understood where Jack was coming from about that even though his relationship with his mom is kind of like terrible and like they argue a lot, he still was that loves her and especially with the part where his dad left and his mom just goes your father isn't coming back anymore uh and like is he dead and she's like no you can think of him if he's dead if you want and she's like why'd he go and then because he didn't love your mother like i was young when i had that conversation with my mom but it just like took me a certain point yeah i i can imagine that scene and it's it's amazing how many i mean I don't, I don't know, of course, anything about the situation, but it's amazing how many, I think, everybody in this room knows somebody, or maybe it's happened to you personally, where, you know, a, a marriage split, and maybe for the reason, um, uh, well, we, we don't know the reason here, but uh, we know there's some adultery going on, and so there, there are all sorts of reasons marriage split up, so another reason I like to write read literature, because it speaks to things that probably all of us have experienced, you see how others, um, relate to it. I like the way you, you almost quoted the book there. That's always good. And I've noticed that about, I 
know where you're getting them if you get them as you read. But I, I like the quotes that are not the obvious ones. In a book this big, there are no obvious quotes. But I like I like it when people are. That always gets my attention when you're writing and you find, you know, a quote that's uh, about something that's a little that you had to read the book or find a place where that quote was mentioned. Let me get these two guys. Clay, can you have the hand? Um, I did earlier. Uh, so I'm going to also talk about uh, Jack and his mother. I, I'm i kind of indifferent and in between Emma Shea and Patty because I didn't necessarily, I found it kind of off-putting because Jack is an older man, but not too old. And he's being somewhat coddled by his mother, he but yet they fight also. all the time. Yes. Which was kind of a weird situation, and then also the introduction of Theodore coming in and being like, "Hey," and I it was weird. Well, that's, a, that's an awkward situation. It's a really awkward situation, and I felt awkward reading it. Yeah. Well, yeah, correct. Well, was he talking about his mother? Yeah. I mean, that's what I was gonna say. I just like it's just such a weird thing. He he, he almost like he almost turns back into a child. And says that like he would be surprised that of what was happened but then after it happened he wouldn't be surprised and yet he would still really love her and ever again and then it gets even weirder when they go to Joe Derwin's party and he has to like interchange this girl but he doesn't like her and then she says you don't like me do you and then he's like no I like you and then he just drops her off and then he kisses Sadie and he's like thank you for not being her it's just like I, 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 I was going to share that, that particular line. Yeah, that's, he has that sense of humor. Um, yes. Um, well, I was going to, this is random, but I just thought it was interesting how that when Willie mention, mentions to Jack about the hospital, like I was kind of interested how that was mentioned in this chapter because it was so much about Willie's like corruption and his, like, yeah, just about his corrupt life. And I just thought it was weird how it, him like wanting to build the hospital was in this chapter. So. Um, I just reread that, and it, it basically it's uh, what do we call it? Um, well, it's health care for everybody, it's particularly poor, and he seems to really want that. He seems to really want. He said all the. Um, I, I don't know the exact limit. I can't find it right now. But uh, this, the hospital. Where's the hospital? One thirty nine. Uh, it was something that again part of. Willie's humor, but he said, um, I'm going to build me the God, he uses a, neg a cuss word there, biggest, cronium, platedest, formal, formaldehyde, stinkiest, free hospital and health center the all father ever let live. Boy, I tell you, I'm going to have a cage of canaries in every room like I can see an Italian grand opera, and there ain't going to be a nurse hasn't won a beauty contest in Atlantic City and every bedpan in 18 karat gold by God every bedpan will have a Swiss music box attachment to it playing turkey in the straw to sex step from Lucia take your choice and all Jack says that'll be swell I mean if you heard that uh, if, you, if you heard that kind of I'm going to promise you this you probably vote for the guy it's, it's extreme, and that's what makes it funny. And every nurse is going to be a beauty contest winner, and you're going to have gold plated bedpans. I mean, it's ridiculous. But I think he's serious because he talked earlier about all the corruption from the rich guys, and somebody mentioned it. He doesn't have rich guys in his life. He has Sugar Boy, and he's got Jack, they're regular guys, but they're willing to, they're willing to play around the rules if they have to. Uh, it's not, I just want you to get in your mind. He's not all bad. He seems to actually have, and that's the point. If you miss that, I think you, you miss the fact that there's no evil person here, and there's no all good person here. They're all this mixture, even Willie. Yes. Well, this is like the part that I thought was like kind of random. And Clay mentioned it too. Where that, um, I don't know what's her name, but she reminds the girl. Eh. But like, she like asked the, her. The ice skater girl? No, the um Drummond? Yeah. The girl the um, the blind date who was on. Well yeah, at the party. Yeah, right. But like she like asked him about like, are you in politics? And he kinda just denies like everything he like she says. And 
then like later on when he's like driving her home, she's like, "You think I'm a fool?" Which is kind of funny because her name like it starts out with U and like dumb. <laughs> and then, That's not an accident. <laughs> and then so he's like, "No, I didn't think that." And then like later on, his mother's like, "Yeah, like I'm a fool. Like <laughs> there's something wrong with her." Um, you know, it's interesting. He he, governors are governors. That's a pretty big deal. And he works for the governor. He is a close, close, close assistant to the governor. And nobody, nobody in uh, 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 Dawson, uh, not Dawson's Landing, but what's his name, Jack Burden's Landing, uh, likes him. But Willie, you know, he, he, he doesn't make a big deal out of it, Jack doesn't. But, uh, you know, he's got a lot of power that he doesn't seem to be proud of. He's not flaunting it, uh, which I admire about it. Um, thank you, yes. Unless he believed in Willie and believed in Willie going after the big guy, the rich guy, the powerful guy, that there's another side of Jack, although he's very passive in, in some respects, he, uh, I think he believes that Willie is the guy with the, didn't he talk about the hammer or the axe? He's going to go swinging that axe. He's going to get things done. And I think Jack likes that because Jack is an idealist. The governor's an idealist. So go ahead, Bill. Um, yes. So, uh, Willie, I think, I can't find the page, but there's a part where where it shows one of Willie's speeches, and uh, it goes back to what you're saying about how there could be some good left in Willie. Like, he talks about, um, he well, he first asked the crowd if he did anything wrong, and the crowd, of course, it's like a rhetorical question, but, you know, Willie starts to say, you know, like, I've done a lot for you, and like the crowd starts like roaring and stuff. And then he mentions he throw, kind of throws God in the mix a bit. I think I, I can't find the page, so I don't. But it makes me realize that he he's a corrupt politician. But in order to like be in favor with the people, I feel like he kind of throws God in there to make himself feel justified. And the way he talks about God, I mean. Jack, I, I never can really understand Jack's understanding of God or his. It's just really just too philosophical, abstract. I don't, I don't know if they understand it either. Um, yeah. that, that's say the best um, for last, right? What I found the most interesting is the, um, the cost that came with how good he was at politics because he defended Byron White for impeachment using his influence and then defended himself while also kind of crushing McCarthy's men in legislature um, through blackmail, but that also costed his um, Miller, his attorney general, from leaving him, as well as his life, his uh, wife almost leaving him too. Of course, uh, the affairs had a lot to do with that. And then eventually his wife will leave him, um, but that's just the cost of how like, good he is at politics, but the more corrupted he gets, the better he gets at politics, but the more he loses of like his um, friends and we said that every person is a mixture of good and bad, uh, at least the view of this book is that, um, but even the outcomes are a mix of good and bad. You can't, even says one time, you can't uh, make an omelet without breaking some eggs. You've probably heard that. Uh, you know, he does pay for it. He, he, you know, he gets what he wants, but he, he loses some things too. It, it, you don't go through life, particularly if you're successful, without, uh, you know, punching a few, Symbolically, and getting punched back, and they got to learn how to take it. Um, there were several things I would. Nobody mentioned Sadie's story. Um, there was a line uh, where is it? Uh, Sadie. I'm coming to peace, but huh? I thought I wrote it down. One forty. 
that makes my my page. Um, uh, she was talking about getting two time, you know, like you knew she had an affair with at this point. She's had an affair with Willie, right? Yeah. Um, but it was uh, wherever he puts it. Uh, anyway, he. Um, Oh, 142, I did write it down. Uh, I liked it. He said, um, he was talk talking about that she was so upset with Willie. She's had an affair with Willie. Willie's married to Lucy. Willie had an affair with somebody else. And Jack said, no, I said trying to get loose from the grip of my lapels. He was two-timing Lucy. So you need some other kind of arithmetic for what he was doing to you. But I don't know whether you multiply or divide in a case like that. Again, this is that dark, sarcastic humor. But it doesn't he have a point? How could you be upset with the affair? Since you're having an affair, it shows you how right and wrong gets so, it all turns down what's right and wrong to me. Uh, it's, yeah, I, I, he's cheating on me. Really? He's cheating on his wife. Don't you know she has prior <laughs> claim on him? Um, I thought that was interesting. Hugh Miller may be the only guy in the book that seems to have a, a clean conscience and a clean record. Um, did anybody notice, particularly at the beginning, I wrote down this phrase about the mom. Uh, he pointed her pluck accurately, uh, the pluck accuracy of the eyebrow. She was like this perfect doll. You know, everything is perfect, her appearance. And there was something, he, he mentioned that she's 55 and there's still something seductive about her. Um, I mean, he's, he's just aware of this, that to other men, he, she's had four or five husbands. Remember, Willie's had one wife, but four or five uh, affairs. I don't know which is, which is better. At least she marries them. He doesn't. But it, it, doesn't it kind of look the same? Of course, some of them died. That was legitimate. Um, I think it is important. Oh, I just, have you noticed his style? Um, I have a whole thing here on style. Um, you just listen to this. This is, have you, you've read a couple hundred pages maybe. This is Jack. There, how would you describe this? Listen to what I'm reading. I, I think I tell you the page number. It's 128 in my book, but I don't think it is in yours. It's, it is chapter and I guess it's about halfway through, it's hard to tell, it's almost halfway through. So he's talking about, I think he's talking about, um, I don't know what he's talking about, actually, but he says, there's nothing more alone than being in a car at night in the rain. I was in the car, and I was glad of it. Between one point on the map and another point on the map, there was the being alone in the car in the rain. They say you're not you are not you except in terms of relation to other people. If there weren't any other people, there wouldn't be any you because what you do, which is what you are, only has meaning in relationship to other people. How would you describe that without trying to figure out what he means? Sometimes I don't even try. How would you describe that kind of thinking or the kind of person who would think that way? That that is a very comforting thought when you're in the car in the rain at night alone. Now, so what, five, six sentences, and he's, he's used that very phrase three times. For then you aren't you, and are not being you or anything. You can really lie back and get some rest. It is a vacation from being you. I think it's clever. I think it's funny. But what does it say about a person who would think that way? I think it's confused. Here's a guy who does it. He's just abstractly philosophizing, philosophizing about things to sort of mask his own real, the reality of his life, um, which I guess you could, um, you could psychoanalyze the guy. It's not our job, but I think that's true. Um, and the part about um, Jack talked about, that, you know, one of the things, I'd like you to write this down at least, one of the things is knowing or knowledge, truth and facts. I talked about that earlier. What's the difference in truth and facts? And I always forget. I always forget. We got five minutes. Uh, and he, he talks about he knew how the impeachment trial was going to end before it ended. Because why? 
because he knew what 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 did what did Willie do to assure he was not going to get a convicted black man? He already knew that he had this vote, and as they walked into the room, he said, you know, he, he knew the guy wouldn't vote against Willie because he blackmailed him. And he knew this guy would. He got as many people in that room as he needed, used as many, uh, as much blackmail as he needed. So Jack was saying, it's like being God. You know how it's going to end all these people out there hoping that Willie will win because they hadn't voted yet. But they didn't need to vote because Willie already knew they needed to be, how it was going to turn out. He knew that before they started the vote because he had blackmailed just enough people. Um, there's a lot about, but it, but what kind of, it, again, what is the cost? What's the price of having that knowledge? You know, you do kind of, it's not really democracy if you're forcing people um, to live this way. Um, so, um, if there's anything else, um, the, the affairs, can four or five affairs, Jack Schumer, Jack Flossie, Willie Flossie, let me just uh, end with that. 136, well, it's not your pick. It's 136 for me, he says, um, let's see, he's talking to, is he talking to uh, Miller, Hugh Miller, and he says, they ain't going to even try again if you don't can't find this. It's 134 in my book, but I don't uh, think, think it is in yours. You let a thing like that get started and no telling what will happen. Why does he not want to uh, fire uh, Byron White? All he had to do is fire Byron White. They never would have come after him. Why didn't he want to fire Byron White? He's guilty. He knew he was guilty. Remember? Because he had, a, he had a, a resignation letter already. He told him what to write. He said, don't sign it yet. Uh, or he signed it, said, don't put the date yet. You know, he, he's already uh, controlled these things. Um, uh, you let a thing like that get started. So why did he, why did he not want him to get impeached or convicted? Because if you, if you let one guy get away with it, then they'll come after the next guy. We can't let them win ever. So it was just pure politics. We can't, I, I wish I could get rid of you, but I can't because if, if they think they got rid of you, they'll come after somebody else. They got to know they can't win. He said they just make Murphy, right? What? Just they make Murphy. Um, they would be your first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that time to stomp them is now. I've got boys out picking up sore heads and wobblies and getting them to town. Say he's been on the phone all day taking the news. Some of the birds are hiding out, for the word must have gone around this time that the boys are running them down. Brought in three this afternoon, and we get them, and we gave what it took. But we had something really ready on all of them. So if, if you want to run for, I think that the current, the new Supreme Court justice, they didn't try very hard. They didn't find anything on her. You remember the last one, um, uh, Kavanaugh? You know, they found these stories, and, we, we assumed they were not true because they, there was uh, basically no evidence, but there were things that were questionable. So what are you gonna do when you're, what, 15 years old, 16? Um, one day you might run for governor. Are you thinking, man, I better not get in any trouble with anybody because one day, you can't live that way. But that's, um, that's even in our culture today, um, you know, if you, if, particularly if it's posted on the internet, It'll come back to haunt them. So you got to be very careful. Uh, these things may come back to, to haunt you, but can, can you live that way? Because if, if you're important, they'll come after it. Even if that's what they did with Kavanaugh, that was in high school, in his high school yearbook, which was like 30 years earlier. Um, and I won't read any more of that, um, but I hope you're getting some idea. We're not gonna be here next Friday, right? That's the parent thing. So we're going to do this on the next Monday, the chapter four. Your chapter four, I need to look at that. I think it's pretty long. So I may, I may have to I may even extend that. It's it's two really two chapters in one. The two best chapters in the book, frankly, are the next two. So you're going to have at least all week and two weekends to, to do it. Hang on just a minute. Um, good job. Um, I'll get this back to you next week.